we go. Awesome. So good afternoon, everyone. Today's uh, Bridges to Better Business workshop for our lunch hour session. Um, we've actually got Patty from the Guelph Arts Council to join us today. So if you haven't met me before, my name's Angie. I'm the program coordinator for the Business Center Guelph Wellington. We'd like to welcome you all to this session. So Patty, I'll pass it off to you. And so thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Angie. And uh, I'm just going to share my screen here for my uh, presentation. There we go. I think everyone should be able to see this now. So good afternoon. I'm Patty Broughton. I'm the Executive Director of Guelph Arts Council. And I'm so grateful to Angie and the staff at the Business Centre Guelph Wellington for inviting me to be part of the Bridges to Better Business program. I'm happy to speak with you today about Guelph Arts Council and the work that we do to support Guelph Wellington's creative community. So in this presentation, I'll share some information about Guelph Arts Council, our programs and services and the impact of COVID-19 on our sector and organization. I'll also share some other resources that are available for creatives and be happy to answer any questions. So uh, first, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a cultural manager and I've been working with organizations in culture and heritage for, well, a long time. <laughs> uh, my background is in fine arts, business and communications. And I've done a little bit of all of those things over the years. It's been a great pleasure to be at Guelph Arts Council since 2015. And a little bit about Guelph Arts Council. Um, there's a photo here on this slide of my current team. And uh, they are a great group. So they are Pritam Sen Gupta and Paige Bromby. And they co-manage our programs and operations uh, year, year round as permanent staff. And with us in this photo are our summer staff, uh, James Florio, who's our communications and events assistant, and Ellie Grant, who is our digital strategies assistant. We just launched a new digital cultural hub this summer. And uh, that's one of the things that Ellie's been helping with. I'm so grateful to these folks. They're such an awesome team. They're so hardworking and just so much fun. So uh, they certainly make working at Guelph Arts Council amazing every day. And uh, so the Arts Council was founded in 1975 as one of Ontario's first community arts councils. We're a community resource, so if anyone um, is looking for help related to arts and culture. If they want to hire an artist, for example, uh, learn to do something creative, or if they're new to town and they want to get involved, those are the sorts of things we help with. Um, and we're, we're glad to do it. And we're also a cultural hub. So we, we have that role both in person at our space at 10C Shared Space when we're able to be there, which is not much lately, but hopefully we're getting back to that soon, but also digitally. So we bring together creative people of really all stripes. We have within our membership about 50 or so organizations, uh, cultural organizations. So those are everything from um, arts festivals, groups, creative enterprises, and again, across all kinds of artistic disciplines. But we also have within our membership, generally between two and 300, I'd say, uh, individual artist members. So, I mean, working in all kinds of media, filmmakers, painters, musicians, uh, performing artists, dancers, uh, anything that you could think of, we have uh, within our within our membership. 
We have a pretty busy time as a small team to connect, promote, and support the creative community in Guelph, which is very rich, as you probably know. Guelph is one of, I think, Canada's great creative cities, so it's a real pleasure and honor to be um, involved in that. Our role is around supporting that community, engaging residents and visitors to Guelph with the arts and building awareness of the benefits of the arts for individuals and communities. I think what a lot of people might not know about the arts and that we try to help people understand is that the arts are critical to our wellness as individuals. And they're also so important to help people have a sense of belonging in the community that they call home. They give a community a sense of place and really make it feel like home for people. So we try to build awareness of the benefits of the arts for wellness, but also for our economic prosperity. The programs and services that we deliver uh, fall into these four, well, basically three buckets. And then we have some other things that we've been working on that are uh, quote, strategic in nature and somewhat new. So I'll get into those into a bit more detail. But first of all, we spend quite a bit of our time on communications. We do that year round, day in, day out, and we love doing it. Also, resources for learning is an important program area for us. We provide professional development for creative people, many of them emerging. We support artists in our community who are just getting started, as well as people who are more established. And bringing them together to support each other is something that we do too. Cultural programs and partnerships, we do uh, kind of two things through these programs. One is to create opportunities for arts workers. We love to pay artists however we can uh, through grants, through partnerships. Uh, we try to get artists in our community working and sharing their skills, talents, and ideas with the broader community. Uh, and we do that through a number of different programs. And the other reason that we like to engage in this type of work is as a way of delivering the benefits of the arts to the community. A program like Art on the Street, for example, is a program of which we're proud of a long history and involvement. And um, I'll fill you in on some of these uh, other sort of strategic initiatives uh, today as well. So first of all, I just uh, would invite you, if you're not already, to sign up for Guelph Arts Council's e-newsletter on our website. Uh, we, it comes out twice a month. One is an arts listing. So in that we grab every opportunity, every event, class, concert, exhibition that offers uh, people an opportunity to engage with the arts or to learn things. Uh, we like to include job opportunities in the arts or if you need a studio space, it's a great place to look for those kinds of listings. The second one we do is called Your Guelph Art Stories. And that one is more in depth in terms of that we seek to create content on a regular basis. We invite our membership to submit stories, but we also engage in interviewing and building content about the arts in Guelph. And believe me, we never run out of story ideas. Uh, there are always more stories than we have the time and the space to tell because uh, the arts are so rich in this city. One of the things that we've done in the past few years as well has, to been, has been to develop some content partnerships to expand the reach of those stories. Uh, it also helps those partners get, get their content that they're developing out into the world. So uh, some of the content partners include Guelph Today. So much of our e-news content uh, that we develop is recirculated by them, which we really appreciate. And another is Arts Unite, which is a nationwide resource for arts workers. The other one is very recent and it's with the new local art scene from the ground up, which is uh, worth checking out for sure. And we're really looking forward to collaborating more with that print publication. And uh, we also have content partners on our new website uh, with local arts organizations like Bamaru and Vocamus Press. 
We engage a lot of volunteers in our communications work. So if people are looking for a way to get to know what's happening in the arts community and like to write or work on social media content, we'd love to hear from you. There's lots to do and it's all so interesting. We also do a quite serious amount of social media, as you can imagine. We're active on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We share not only our stories, but a lot of stories from individual artists and arts organizations uh, in the area, as well as opportunities that might be out there in the arts. We are always encouraging people in our network to tag us in their posts so we can do that sharing. We sort of seek out information to share and also um, look for that uh, kind of engagement. These are some of the things that we do around communications. And one of the ones that's major for us is guelfarts.ca. And I'll just uh, I'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, it's a digital arts hub for Guelph Wellington artists and audiences. Being an artist member of Guelph Arts Council is anywhere from zero to $30. So you pick your price anywhere in there and you can be profiled on the site, take advantage of our e-commerce opportunities, post events, news stories and resources through the, and all through that new site. We're really excited about this. It was a big project, a lot of work, a lot of fun. And um, it does offer an opportunity for people to get the word out about what they're doing creatively to reach uh, new audiences and to connect with other artists. Um, all right, so next uh, area of our work is, is we call resources for learning. And within this category of our programming, we have a few different types of work that we do. First, there's the Guelph Emerging Artist Mentorship Project which has just started its eighth round this week. Um, we're so delighted to be part of that project and to have seen that flourish over the last few years. We started it in 2017, and it's a partnership with the School of Fine Art and Music at the University of Guelph. But it's not exclusively for students or grads of that program. It is open to other emerging artists in the community, and we defined emerging artists quite broadly. We're so grateful for support for that program from RBC Emerging Artists Project. We have artists who are getting started in their art careers from many demographics who have uh, engaged in this program. And it's, it's been uh, quite exciting to match them. Uh, they're visual and media artists, curators, cultural managers, musicians, and we match them with more established artists, mostly um, artists who live, live and work in Guelph, but also a little bit more farther out sometimes, depending on you know, the fit with the, uh, with the mentees. So they spend time together to learn from their mentor's experience. And then the, the emerging artist group collaborates in each round on a culminating exhibition project that's supported by SOFAM. It's, um, it's been so fun to do this project and it's also been very rewarding in terms of some of the stories that have come out of that program about relationships that have been formed that have ended up being quite long term. And also uh, some of the other opportunities that the program has opened up for emerging artists locally. And it really makes it all worthwhile to, uh, to work on this. Another thing that we do under this area of our work is awards and funds. And this is a great time to, to let you know about them because it's uh, something that we do in the fall and the deadlines are coming up soon. We have the Jane Graham Memorial Award. That's a professional development award for visual artists and the Youth Opportunities Award, which is an award for programs that help youth engage in the arts. Often we're able to fund youth led projects, which we love to do, but uh, not always. It's open to both youth led and other organizations that might be developing programs for youth. We also have a new one this year called the Research and Renewal Grant, which uh, actually we're just going to be announcing today. So when I'm done with this uh, webinar, I'm going to send that news release out. Um, that new grant, it brings together community heritage 
and Storytelling, and it's a research-based arts award. Uh, we're so grateful for some private funding that's made that possible. So we're running that this year as a kind of pilot project to see what the response is like from artists. And finally, the last one that we have is an ongoing fund. It's called the Sue Richards Artist Relief Fund. And what that is, is uh, a fund that can help artists with some financial support if they've been, if they're ill or been injured and find themselves unable to work for a period of time. So it's, um, it's available to apply to at any time during the year if something should happen and there's a gap in income. So um, there's lots more available on our website in terms of information about those awards and funds. But the, uh, the deadlines that are coming up, October 18th is the Jane Graham deadline. November 1st is the Research and Renewal Grant. And November 15th is the Youth Opportunities Award. So we're going to be quite busy this fall accepting those applications. And uh, we engage uh, people on uh, independent juries to help us with the decision making. Um, there's usually you know, more interest than we have funds. So we need to uh, have a process to uh, assess them. We also do workshops and webinars. So this can, this can vary quite a bit from year to year. We're, we uh, are pretty flexible about that programming. And we usually have one session that's connected to our mentorship project, which is called Opportunity Knox. And it's very career focused for emerging artists and students. Um, but we also do sessions on a wide variety of topics. And we always want to hear from artists in our network to find out what they want to learn so that we can better match uh, their needs. So last year was amazing. We partnered with the Business Center, actually, uh, Angela and our staff at the GAC. We did a series of five or six webinars on business skills. And the timing was great because uh, artists were kind of like, you know, struggling a little bit or many were in the pandemic with how to kind of transition some of their their business um, their businesses so we were talking to them about things like uh, pandemic recovery and um, transitioning to doing things more digitally social media uh, how to protect yourself through contracts and so those are the sorts of topics we we often like to um, to cover off because they, they apply to a wide variety of artists in our network. We also share resources and opportunities through our e-news and our website. We share information about professional development, volunteer opportunities, but most importantly, paid work for people in our sector. And uh, we share those out as broadly as we can. Um, finally, the last area of our work is cultural programs and partnerships. And one of the big ones we do in the spring is Art on the Street. And uh, we're grateful to be a partner for many, many years. I think it's about 18 years with the Downtown Guelph Business Association on Art on the Street. That involves inviting applications. It's a juried arts exhibition and sale. We invite applications in January and roll out the event in June. So the Arts Council is really the artist liaison. So we're, we're involved in the, uh, the application, jurying, selection process and making that all happen. And the Downtown Association helps with that, but also looks after sort of the event logistics the marketing, the street closures, those types of things. So it's been a great partnership over the years. And hopefully we'll be back on the street in 2022. We're not too far in planning that yet, but we, uh, we look forward to it. The last two years have been virtual, which has been a great opportunity for artists to help get the word out about their e-commerce and encourage them to sell online. So it's a little bit, a little bit of um you know, a way for us to, to deliver a, a bit of professional development in that area while hosting an online event. We also do an exhibition program at Tensi Shared Space, which is where we have our office. And uh, so we have uh, four months out of every year where we can program that space with our members work. And we usually manage to fit in about six shows in that time frame. We invite proposals from 
from artists in our in our network. And uh, this has also been one of those wonderful things that has come um, like uh, kind of like a, a relationship that's been built between two programs, which is the mentorship project in that uh, 10 C shared space. Nothing intentional, but just uh, the kind of thing where often artists who have participated in the mentorship project will then may be inspired to have a show, sometimes their first solo show in that, uh, in that space. So it's, um, you know, those are the types of relationships that have developed uh, with uh, emerging artists and the Arts Council. Uh, and, you know, some of the people that have come through that program have also become volunteers, but also paid staff. So in our current staff team, both Paige and Ellie have participated in that mentorship project. Another, another artist who was a participant is now one of our board members. So you can see uh, how, how awesome the, um, you know, the relationships built through mentorship have been for us. Um, and we also do some heritage programming that you might be familiar with as, uh, as Guelphites, and that is uh, uh, Doors Open Guelph and Historical Walking Tours. And those programs are great ways for people to learn more about their community. So I just wanted to mention um, a couple of the more recent initiatives that we've been involved with uh, we, that have affected our programming or our operations. In 2017, we relocated to 10C and it's uh, our own office is kind of small there, but the, the benefits have far outweighed that because it's such a vibrant and wonderful community hub. Uh, we have a street level office, which is so much more accessible for people to visit us and ask questions and tell us what they're up to. And uh, we've made a lot uh, more connections in that space than in our kind of far away, uh, larger, but sort of out of the way space that we previously were in. So uh, we can't wait to get back to our space at 10C because uh, it's just a wonderful buzzing kind of a community space. And uh, we have done a lot of partnering with 10C as a result, too, of our co-location. We also started the mentorship project in 2017. And around the same time, we began developing an Indigenous land acknowledgement and building more relationships with Indigenous artists and elders in the community. And we have, through that process and the newer artist in residence project that we're developing with 10C, We've been working on our commitment to elevating Indigenous artists' voices in our work. We did a research project related to that artist in residence project um, last year, wrapped that up in June. And now we are going to be regrouping and thinking about funding and rolling out that project as we have it conceived based on the research project that we've done. So that's um, something that we're very excited about. And um, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, we've also, of course, been working, getting started on our website planning. So um, that's been uh, a busy, a busy time. We realized that uh, I guess in around 2019 or so, actually probably earlier than that, that our 2014 website was no longer technologically sufficient. And uh, especially as more artists were working in digital ways, video and, and that kind of thing. And it just wasn't well supported by our website. So we got started on, on you know, working on that pre-pandemic and rapidly, rapidly realized that what we really needed to do was to build a new website. So um, we applied to the Canada Council for the Arts for funds, which I guess in a way was a, a bit of a silver lining for some organizations in the pandemic was that there were more uh, funds available for digital strategies. And so we took advantage of that. Um, and build this digital cultural hub, which we've just launched uh, with um, Barking, Do uh, Barking Dog Studios, local web developer was our, um, the, the group, the, the web developer that we worked with, which was a lot of fun. I certainly highly recommend them. 
So it took uh, took quite a while, and there's still a couple of bells and whistles to be um, that we'll sort of be flipping the switch on with that site that aren't quite there yet. But we're looking forward to that and continuing to kind of onboard more artists and arts organizations um, as users of the site. So the, the COVID-19 pandemic has certainly had a big impact on our organization, but also on the people that we work to serve. So we've certainly been grappling with the impacts of the pandemic on artists. They were certainly immediate and massive, as you can imagine. And um, you know, there are many people that have been very hard hit by the pandemic uh, in terms of their livelihoods. And uh, artists have certainly been in uh, very high up in the mix of people affected by it. And so we, you know, we were at, had to ask ourselves uh, how we respond as a small organization that has been sent home to work in our home offices and how can we help as best we can. So one of those initiatives was the Guelph Arts Hub. And um, so the, uh, the pandemic had a massive impact on so many people. Artists were among the hardest hit. Um, you know, as you probably know, artists have typically low incomes as it is, so you can imagine. Many, many lost gigs and sales, no live performances, art shows or classes, and arts venues also have been very hard hit because they couldn't program live events or rent space. So everybody was moving online to try their best to earn a living and continue their art practices. So that was sort of um, at the time that we did this series of webinars with the business center. That was kind of uh, how we were trying to support artists in that time. We Another thing that we did was just to remove all financial barriers to becoming a member, which uh, we had some, some project grants to help us do that. Uh, because as a small charity, we do rely on uh, some of the, some revenue, usually from things like workshops and membership. But we found ways to, uh, to make sure we didn't need to ask artists for that anymore. And we've decided uh, that uh, we will continue that practice indefinitely of having pay what you can memberships. So I think that was a good outcome for our organization. Um, so just to, to give a little bit of context, there was a national survey of the cultural sector that was done uh, in 2020. And in that year, artists lost an average of 25 gigs and over $25,000 in income. I mean, that's just enormous, right? And this organization, Arts Unite, that you see there, a shot of their website here, was uh, also emerged nationally as a coordinated online resource for artists to gain information about resources, grants, and employment, and to network with each other. Because there was certainly so much information coming out from a wide variety of sources, and it was quite overwhelming for a lot of people, a lot of creative people to figure out, like, how do I get help? There's help, but, but what is it and where is it? And there's so many different pieces of advice and different programs. So Arts Unite was a, a project that was conceived to kind of try to um, make that a more coordinated. Um, So in 2020 and 2021, uh, GAC and its community partners, we, we transitioned two of our regular programs to digital platforms, Art on the Virtual Street and Doors Open Guelph, which was of course a lot of learning for, for all of our organizations who were doing that sort of thing at the time. Um, Art on the Virtual Street was open to Guelph Wellington artists who could sell online and arrange curbside pickup or delivery and participating was free. Exhibitions at 10C Shared Space continued uh, with safe in-person or online receptions and artist talks. One of the things we were busy with, like many organizations uh, in the pandemic was advocacy. So we advocated for municipal and provincial support for the arts, including the City of Guelph's Emergency Fund, which they've now rolled out in 2020 and 2021, and it's continuing um, this year, 
at least one more deadline this year on November 1st. And that's a fund that is available to individual artists as well as organizations, which has been a change for city funding for the arts. And um, I think a very positive one. And uh, we also, we also uh, spoke out in terms of support for basic income as an ongoing approach as a benefit for people in many sectors, but uh, artists, um, of course, as well. We also, in this time frame, uh, like like many many other organizations, um, we made a commitment to anti-racism and looking at our organization and making sure that uh, we put in place some um, initiatives to make sure that we were being as welcoming as we could. We formed a diversity and inclusion committee and undertook equity, diversity and inclusion training. So that's work that continues and, uh, and will continue, of course. So uh, we were able to, to do through the pandemic these, uh, these initiatives to kind of make um, membership in the Arts Council and access to our services easier for, for people that might face uh, financial or other barriers to getting involved. So the sliding scale memberships, uh, we will be soon developing an online, well, we're developing it, but it hasn't been launched yet, is um, a booking service for live performances so that people in the community or businesses can look to our website as a place to book artists for a live show. So we're looking forward to that. And um, also we've been learning and getting used to uh, the process of providing e-commerce for through our website for those um, artists in our network who uh, may not have that set up on their own, um, you know, Etsy or, or some other um, online source for e-commerce. So we're glad to be able to provide that so this is just a quick, a couple of screenshots from the new site. So you can see the homepage there and um, also a few shots from the store. So there's lots of artwork up there now for sale and uh, just a, a few shots as well of what the member, what the member directory looks like. So that directory is very searchable for people in the community if they're looking for artists, um, you know, by discipline, by type, or by keyword, there's a cultural event calendar that uh, has all kinds of different uh, arts events and arts news resources and opportunities. We'll also be incorporating forums for artists who are site users so that they can network and connect with each other through the site. So not 100% not sure on the details on that yet, but uh, it is something that we have planned for the next little while. So um, there's also, once you become a member and log into the site, we have resources to help people on board. So we have been delivering one-on-one -on -one support for, for anyone who needs it, but there are also resources on the site, uh, PDFs, but also a really lovely training video featuring my colleagues, Kratom and Ellie. So um, there's lots of help there for people who are interested in, in getting involved. So this last slide that I have, and I think that I will probably be able to get this to people through Angie um, as a PDF maybe or something like that, is um, there are many art service organizations and arts funders in Ontario that are great resources. So for Guelph Wellington folks, there's the Guelph Arts Council, but uh, people are in other places or they're looking for more specific information that does uh, like a deeper dive on their discipline, for example, there are all of these organizations that can help. Um, some of them are membership based or they have a specific focus like careers or, um, creative spaces, for example. But uh, yeah, I 
think that that is about it. And I've got a last slide here just with our contact information. So a couple, couple links to our site for how you can uh, get involved with that if you would like. Um, there's support available through that uh, email address, the administration one. And then general inquiries about anything else, really anything else at all, you can send to me. And um, also our phone number is there and we love to have visitors. So unfortunately right now it's kind of on a by appointment basis, but uh, we're very glad to meet with people as well. So I think, I think that's it, but I would love to uh, have any questions. That's wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Patty. And thank you so much information. And you were worried about being under 20 minutes. <laughs> that was so much, so much there. Um, so just for those who are following us on Facebook Live, if you have any questions or uh, items that you would like to ask Patty, please throw them in the comments or feel free to connect with me or Patty by email. You can connect with the Business Center at success at wealthbusiness.com and we will be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Um, for now, I will be turning off the Facebook live stream, but do send anything our way that you have. And thank you very much, Patty. So much information, so much like I, I went to university at Guelph, uh, University of Guelph for arts. So it's always a soft spot in my heart dealing with arts and the arts community. Um, so do I want to thank you and thank everybody for attending. So, uh, well, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Angela. No, thanks for so much information. So do join us for <laughs> I all when of you do these, you realize, oh my goodness, no wonder we feel we're so busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're no, busy. there's a lot there. Um, and everybody who's watching this do realize we have lots of other workshop sessions and uh, experts coming over the rest of this month. So check out our Bridges to Better Business programs and other workshops that'll be coming out over the next little while.